Good day, traders. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Going to talk about indices and commodities today. Got a few interesting charts, a couple situations that are brewing that uh, could certainly be uh, be interesting uh, in the very near term. Uh, before we get started, how you doing, Greta? Good day. Uh, before I get started, let me just get a visual audio check. Looks like everything is working fine. Great. Good morning. Good morning, Marino. Hey, Ed. How's it going? Uh, all right. All right. All right. So we got a, a fairly full house today. Before we get started, let's uh, let's go through the usual risk disclaimers. Give yourself 10 seconds or so, uh, and then we'll move on to the next one, and then we will get started. Hypothetical trading, the usual stuff. And we're off. Where are we going to start today? Uh, I guess we'll start with precious metals. Uh, uh, cable got a nice big rip, huh? Guys watching Sterling right now. Had some uh, some decent inflation data. Uh, anyways, we'll talk about that tomorrow. We won't talk about the data, but we'll talk about the move. Uh, so, looking at you know, first of all, we'll just start with gold. All right, I, I, I to be to be perfectly honest with you, Robbie Long, Sterling Aussie. There you go. That thing's up nice, huh? 140 points. Uh, so before I get, you know, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, when it comes to precious metals right now, I, I had a pretty good handle on on things as we're moving higher. Kind of, kind of had a decent handle on this down move, but then, so we got over to we got over to the FOMC day, and my my concern was is uh, is that we were going to have a big dollar move. Right, we talked about that. I, I think. A couple times last week, uh, so we we're going to have a big down move on 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 FOMC, and with that, that was going to leave some upside to uh, precious metals, uh, and so got the big rally in gold. It could care less about 1217, which was at a level that we were using on both the downside and upside, uh, and I and I really, to 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 be honest, I, it's one of these things right now where I don't really have a great feel for what's going on in precious metals, but so I'm kind of leaning on, kind of leaning on where I think the dollar is going to go, and and uh, you know, so we'll just kind of take a look at the dollar, and, and and I'm and I've been I've been bearish on the dollar, so obviously, uh, if the dollar makes a strong move, then you're then it's going to give at least a, it's going to put some type of floor, most likely, uh, in precious metals. Although the two can move together, and I I think I say that all the time, and because they can, uh, correlations are you know something that can can turn on you like a rabid dog, uh, but anyways, when you get a strong move in the dollar, it's it's usually accompanied by an, an opposite move uh, in precious metals. Although I do remember a period in what was 2014, maybe it was 2015, the dollar was rip roaring and and you had gold go up like 10 percent. So you know those things don't always play out the way you think, but. You know, I'm thinking that we're going to get some more dollar weakness. I think it's the clear uh, picture right now, and I think that maybe we've got another, you know, maybe one percent or so uh, in the dollar, which which is certainly going to to be, you know, something that at least help along uh, or or keep a bid in in precious metals. So, you know, even though right now we're seeing dollar weakness, gold's not really moving higher, is it? It's just, but it's not moving lower. So I, I think that, that there's going to be, and if, if that dollar move gets really aggressive, which I think there's potential for that to happen, then that it's certainly it, it's it's going to be more likely to to give a boost to gold. I I'm kind of targeting this 1250 area uh, right now. I'm thinking that that we could get up to this trend line 
uh, over the near term going back to August 2016 and I says dollar move what's your cut on euro yeah dollar goes down euro goes up right <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that one tomorrow I want to try to keep this uh, as focused as I can on on commodities indices uh, but I think we're gonna get to this 1250 this trend line here and then and then we'll have some problems maybe and that would also maybe line up with some dollar support uh, again I don't want to I don't want to get too married to the idea that the two have to move inversely they've obviously recently had moved inversely in a very strong fashion in fact I was just looking at the one week correlation uh, yesterday in an article I wrote and it was it was like negative 98 percent over a week between gold silver and and uh, the dollar so obviously they were doing almost a one-to-one -one, uh, in, in opposite terms and but I don't expect that that's going to maintain and, and, and you can see today we're getting some uh, we're getting some dollar weakness but we're not really getting any strength out of the out of precious metals I still think the precious metals are somewhat heavy uh, and so I'm not I'm, I, I think that the gold will get higher but and, and it'll continue to go higher in the near term but I don't have a lot of conviction now looking at silver silver is 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 back above this this low 17 zone that that's been in play for a long time it's been in play since June of last year uh, so not not too long from now it's gonna have a birthday and so this is looking at the 1730 1710 area and we can see here even though we had a we had a reversal die uh, we could see that we that, that silver's just hanging out, right? Silver's just just chilling uh, above this this support, once resistance, now support. And what I like about how it's how it's acting right here is that it's got this wedge forming. So we had this nice big. This is a two-hour chart. Had this nice big push, and then we're getting a nice uh, what appears to be a continuation pattern. And so again, in line with with the weak dollar stronger precious metals theme that would that would be consistent uh, so I do think that we're gonna get another leg up here and this this triangle is getting out here where it's it's gonna trigger soon uh, and, and I think that the risk there would be to the upside now looking at another metal uh, let's take a look at copper copper is a little different so copper copper we had this this kind of ugly head and shoulders pattern triggered we came back up to this confluence of a neckline. This was uh, yesterday. Uh, we had this down day. Uh, a confluence of this neckline and this trend line coming up, passing from the head over the right shoulder. Uh, you could even get a little more conservative, I guess, and take it out to this to the very peak of there. Uh, nevertheless, it came close. Turn lower. I'm I'm a little a little less constructive on on copper, and and, and copper doesn't quite have the same relationship. Uh, so you know it, it, it's with the dollar so it really is one of those you kinda gotta put off to the on the back burners in terms of how, how that's gonna play out uh, it's it's not quite as, as sensitive but to me copper still looks like you've got a low you know you got a lower low well you got the first low you got a lower high you got a lower low uh, we did make a, a higher high on an intraday basis but on a closing basis we still made a lower low or lower high I can't get my lower highs and lower lows correct today. And then we made a lower low. Right? We made a lower low from here, we made a lower low from over here, and we made a lower low from over there. And now we got a lower high in here. So this is certainly a bearish sequence at this time. Uh, now if we were to cross back up above this trend line, then possibly uh, we could see we could see some upside, but I think that as long as it stays under that 270 area, uh, I think copper is is still at risk of of moving lower uh, over the near term. Well, let's take a look at oil. Now, oil this is actually I think we got what a rollover. So this this up up 2.3 percent is is not correct. Uh, I'm looking at the futures you know we're in the we're in the May contract I've got it really up about 75 basis points uh, th this is kind of when these charts get a little get a little skewed uh, is around these these rollover times uh, but even with that said 
Oil to me is just very heavy, but there's not a lot to do. There's not a lot to do right here in oil. Uh, oil, we had this sell-off, right? This was something that that I, I wasn't. The timing of it was was kind of surprising, but the the magnitude was not. We were looking at uh, the COTs and how they basically were were saying, you know, based on the number of long speculators, that that there was a lot of supply out there uh, in terms of sellers, not supply and oil. Although there's there's plenty of that too, but uh, it, it it basically it did force said that that it was going to be difficult for oil to move higher. Let's put it that way. So to me, it was like a very cautious stance from the long side, risk to the downside. Not not on not surprised at all that we had this spill. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, because because you've got all those you know you got all those large speculators that are that are uh, they're long and they've they got to liquidate their positions when things aren't working out for them right and we've we've alleviated some of that and we've we've come off a bit uh, after last week's report this this down move has certainly alleviated some of that pressure uh, in terms of their positioning there's been some liquidation going on so it, it has alleviated it somewhat but it's not it's by no means has it come off enough to really to really say, okay, now it's bullish. To me, what's going on here is we we had this this bounce, uh, we had this bounce from from this trend line, going back to April of last year. We had this nice pin bar, but so far this pin bar is not really it's not really turning out to be much. Uh, then we had a little reversal on the retest of the trend line going up, coming up off the the lows, the low. The low back in February of last year. That was that was when uh, you know oil was going to go to like five dollars a barrel, and you know it was China was you know it was over, and stocks were done, and now stocks are up thirty percent. China's still alive, and oil's twice the price. <laughs> uh, that's usually what happens when you get those extreme uh, sentiment uh, situations, but. Right here, to me, this is just kind of a, a congestion that that's, we're working off this short-term oversold, uh, and I think that, that I think that we're going to end up lower. I just think that, that looking at this strong down move here that we had, that that it needs a, a little bit of time to work off short-term oversold. So with that in mind, uh, I think we're going to eventually get a break of of this trend line, which is pretty sturdy. Because you've got a lot of inflection points, and then when you got a really nice key reversal bar, it you know, like just goes to further add to the importance of that trend line, right? It, it shows you that when we got down there, that there was there was some demand, right? And whether it was you know there was a lot of just short covering, uh, just you know dip buyers, whatever it may, it may be, it doesn't matter. There was a, there was a good amount of buying pressure to to put in a reversal day like that. Now. I think that if we this may take a little time, as we saw over here, it took what felt like forever. Uh, it, it felt like forever, two months in a in a, in a short term trader's viewpoint is forever. Um, we, we we finally got that breakdown, but I think we're gonna have a this isn't gonna last like this. We're not gonna have this period where we're gonna go two months before we get another move. I think maybe a week, two weeks tops. Uh, but if we get below this this reversal day low, and we're breaking this trend line, we really don't have anything to the left. We've got some. We've got a. We got a minor pivot down here, just around 45, just under 45. Uh, but I really think that maybe. I really think that maybe we're gonna get down towards this 42, 43 area. So the focus, the focus is, in the short term. You know, once we start to break down, is 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 to focus on the shorts. Right now, I think it's kind of choppy. Right, it's not it's not really conducive to to trading in either direction, uh, especially if if you've got a short term handle on on things. So I'm not really you know not really taking oil too seriously just yet, but I do think it's going to go lower. Uh, it would even if it bounced and and it rallied back up here, uh, I would view that as as maybe even a you know, kind of a gift. Uh, again, we had a sharp break. If we got a rebound back up there, oil's volatile. Wouldn't totally surprise me. 
uh, I, that would that would incline me instead of waiting for it to start to weaken again to get short. Uh, that would incline me to think that that maybe this will be some type of gift, and we'd be back up in this in these highs. Uh, we'd be back up in these highs here, and on a rough area where we kind of held for a couple of months. So if we got up there, that might be an intriguing spot. But I, I just don't think that if this down move is legit, I just don't think we're going to get that. Uh, let's move on to let's move on to some indices now. So here's one that's kind of a real disappointment. Uh, when you look at the the global spectrum of risk on since the beginning of the year, uh, it, it's had the Nikkei has had one day, one day. All its gains, well, it's 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 not even it's it's barely up on the year, but all of those gains came on the first day of trading. And right now, all we're doing is just putting in this this ascending wedge. And the ascending wedge, given the the trend going all the way back to the lows in June, suggests that it's going to move higher. Now, the only problem with that is that we've got other indices that are extended or at key points, and and so if those markets start to come off. You've got a relative weakness situation here, so the Nikkei then would be at risk of being one of the first ones to get sold. Uh, but as long as it stays in this consolidation, as long as it stays in there, then it's okay. Uh, we could get down towards the bottom of this ascending wedge, hold, and fill it out some more, and it could take some more time. And next thing you know, it's April, and we're still looking at this thing. Uh, but I do think that if, if general risk appetite can hold up, uh, then the Nikkei will eventually break out, and then we'll be looking at that 20K mark, which is not just a psychological level, uh, but it's an actual real level that the market traded at uh, back in 2015. And the measured move of, of this pattern, uh, if you were to take basically 900 points it's actually higher because I had a different I had a different formation with the, this measured move is it, it should be up here now uh, that's the beauty of, of triangles it's not really the beauty it's it's kind of the annoying aspect is that they can change shapes we did have we did have an ascending wedge then it broke out then it failed back inside and now it's taking on so the symmetrical triangle turned into an ascending wedge uh, if you take the depth of this pattern Right, that's about 900 points. You take it from the break point, 900 up, takes you up to about 20,500. So right around there. I think before I had a 20,300. But again, this is going to take some more time. But if we were to get down towards this, this lower trend line, from a short-term trading perspective, this would be a spot where I'd be inclined to think, you know, that maybe we get a little bounce, you know, and that would be an, an, an area of, of, of good support. And then conversely, as we get up towards the top here, it's resistance until we actually get that break. Uh, let's take a look now. Let's go to uh, let's go to Europe. So the DAX. This is this is what I'm kind of keying everything off of. All right, the DAX is this is a this is a very interesting pattern. And we're going to look at the CAC too, which which is one that I don't look at so often, but it's. It's at a very interesting spot as well, and, and doing something similar to the DAX, which is not surprising considering how correlated the two indices are. Uh, but when you look at the DAX here, you've got a really nice rising wedge. And this rising wedge is likely to lead to a powerful move. Now, here's the scenario, and I put any time here because we're there. We're at the point where the DAX could make a move at any time. I, I don't know what's going to make it move out of there. Uh, it, it could just be that there's more buyers than sellers, more sellers than buyers. You know, that's markets don't have to move because they have some big catalyst. And uh, it, as, as we've seen, right, we've we've seen some some pretty big catalysts not that long ago with central banks, this, that, the other. Markets didn't really move, uh, and then all of a sudden they'll start moving, and then you know some headlines will come out, and there you go. Uh, we're, we're off and we're running. So. With the DAX here, there, there's three scenarios I'm looking at. One is that we get an upside break, and then we just continue on higher. And so the way that I look at this is like whichever way it breaks is the way that I'm going to go. But my my fear is on the upside 
is that when you get a rising wedge after a very extended run, uh, it, it tends to be an ominous sign that 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 the market is going to roll over. Okay, and when you get these upside breaks after an extended move, they can fail very quickly, and when they fail, they fail miserably. So we'll, we'll just play the hand that's dealt to us in front of us, right? So if we break out to the upside, uh, we gotta give the benefit of the doubt that it's going to continue higher and that the global risk trends are are going to continue to move up, uh, and, and and we'll know pretty quickly uh, if this is going to turn into one of those failures because it'll usually usually happens almost like right away, with it within a few days. Uh, so we we get the upside break, then you know then those 2015 record highs are just a shot away. Uh, there'd be it would be hard to imagine that if we're not going to fail that we wouldn't at least get to this point, uh, if not higher, and and likely then the S and P's are moving on towards new record highs, et cetera, et cetera, the, the, the FTSE. And perhaps then we get the Nikkei. Uh, we get the Nikkei to finally do its thing. And if you notice, you know, this is where you know, we've, got the, we've got the Nikkei. Uh, this is basically the same type of situation as the DAX. It's just taking on a different shape, and it's, it's, it's tilted a lot differently. But it's it's a similar it's a similar situation. There's like a 75% uh, one month correlation between the two indices. I believe that's what it is. So they're, they they definitely that's you know global indices trade similarly. It's just magnitudes are different, and then thus their their chart patterns and, and support and resistance levels become on, on, on different magnitudes. So uh, but generally. You, know, you get an upside break. You got to be careful of the of the reversal of the downside. Now we get a downside break. I don't think that we're going to see a downside break and then a break higher. Uh, what what happens in these situations when you get a rising wedge and it breaks against the trend? You know, you've got first of all stocks and stock market by just nature is long biased, right? It's it's an investor's market. Okay, it's not like it's not like the FX market. Okay, it's not like commodities. It doesn't have this long term heart rate heart beat monitor type situation that the, the general trend is up people invest in stocks so the market is just generally long which is why when that goes down everybody runs for the exits at once and panics and then and then you get these these big capitulation bottoms but uh, and conversely you don't really get capitulation tops I mean sometimes you get a you get a really you get a blow off where everybody kind of panics to the upside but panics to the upside are worse are much more rare uh, the panics to the downside because you know, nobody really panics in a good situation. Any, anyways, with that said, the market has an upward bias. So when these types of patterns break, basically you've got you know you've got a situation where the market's heading higher. Uh, it's got higher highs, higher lows, and when that when the market starts to break against that, you've got a lot of you got a lot of sellers available, and so the moves tend to be much sharper uh, than they are to the downside when these patterns break. So to me, there's there's two bearish scenarios and one bullish. Uh, and right now, we're sitting right at the bottom of this wedge, just hanging on. We've been hanging on for the past couple of weeks. You've got this trend line coming up from December. Uh, it, it, we've just been hanging on. And so it, we're really putting in a lot of test here. And so if this starts to break and we get a, we get a nice strong daily close, well below the, the bottom side of the the pattern, then I think we're going to see we're going to see a strong move lower. Uh, but again, I'm not you know I'm not I'm not going to predict that it's going to do that. I'm just going to take a reactionary stance and 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 go from there because uh, right now we're still sitting at the bottom of it, so it's it's not a spot where you want to be necessarily really doing anything. Uh, if anything. You know, from a risk reward standpoint, this is looking at a two hour chart. You can see it very clearly here. Even on the two hour, it's, it's very clear. Uh, it, it, from a risk reward standpoint, you know, if it breaks down, say here, then, then you know that, that the market, that's this is the line in the sand, right? So if it breaks down into here, then, then this pattern is likely triggered and we're going to start hitting off on these, these downside levels. Uh, from a risk reward standpoint, you know, selling into support is never a good idea. Long side, uh, again, this would be the the line in the sand. I, I 
personally am just waiting for it to break. Um, and and right now we're, we're we're sitting right there on the cusp. So we're we're certainly at a and and here's the thing: if this if this makes a strong break one way or another, then you're going to see other global indices. And I'm not saying the DAX is the leader, uh, but I do think it has the most clear cut situation. So it, it's it's like it's not necessarily the leader where it's going to be the reason why the S and P goes up or down, or the reason why uh, the FTSE goes up or down, and and whatnot. It, it, but it does have the cleanest picture right now, uh, and if it makes a strong move, you're, it's almost certain that we're going to see strong moves elsewhere, right? Because the correlation between global indices is so high, uh, and and risk on and risk off, and and, and any kind of big capacity generally spreads out, you know, across the board. And and the DAX is a is a huge and, and widely watched stock market. Or index, I should say. Uh, now let's look at the CAC. So the CAC. Oh boy, I moved by. I was writing an article and I took the lines off the charts. All right, so we'll draw them in. So the CAC. Here you go. Nice rising wedge. We're right there. Now I have this big red circle because look where this comes. This comes. It arrives right at. So here's the 2000 peak, 2007, 2015, and we're right there. We're right there. So given that we're right there uh, and you've got this, this explosive pattern developing, right, funneling up, ready to, uh, to make a move, is very intriguing. So if we start to break this bottom side trend line, then basically we're coming off of major resistance, and the likelihood is that we're going to get a, a big shot lower. Again, it looks similar to the DAX. The DAX pattern is bigger. This this really only started to conform to what the DAX was doing more recently. Uh, but the DAX and the CAC obviously are going to trade uh, similarly. So <laughs> this is like we couldn't get really at, at any kind of more of a of, a, of an inflection point of importance than, than we are right now. Now we squirt higher, ideally I'd like to see a weekly close above that trend line because it's so long term in nature. I mean we're going back you know 16 and a half years. Uh, so you know some little daily close above it is kind of meaningless. But if we get a turn lower then then I think that you know, I think that that'll be enough that, that it would trigger a, a pretty sizable down move. If we get a nice squirt higher, close a week above there, uh, you know, then likely the DAX has also done the same thing, right? They're not gonna they're not gonna go in opposite directions, and uh, and then it may be off to the races for the CAC. Uh, but I'm not, you know, again these these patterns forming after up moves there's, is. is there's always that failure or risk or, or risk failure. There's always that that uh, tendency for these to, to lead the top. So uh, to me, you know, doing anything right at this juncture is not. There, there's really nothing there. But I think again, given the proximity of where we're at in time, uh, we're going to have a move here arriving very soon. Ronnie asks, "What is the CAC 40?" It's France. It's the French French index, so you know that's why you can see why the DAX and the CAC would trade uh, so similarly. Let's take a look now at the FTSE. So the FTSE, you got a lot of lines, a lot of labels. Uh, just one second. There we go. I had to adjust my headset. Uh, the FTSE. FTSE sitting up here, it's just kind of hanging out. We've got a nice sequence of higher highs, higher lows. It's just hanging out. There's not a lot to uh, there's not a lot to see here. Um, we've got we've got this 2013 topside trend line. This comes from the 2013 peak over 2015, over this January high, uh, roughly around the area of the early March peak. We're sitting above it. It's a pretty. It's a pretty long-term situation, so it's it's kind of a rough rough line. I don't. 
expect if we pull back that it, it gets used as necessarily as support and and, and a, you know in a way that where it just touches it and then and then it would rally off of it. Uh, it's kind of a rough line, uh, but looking more at the the stuff that's more immediate, we do have this this channel. So we have this lower trend line, then we have this top side trend line, and I'm using this channel in general as as my as my guide. Uh, if we were to pull back towards the bottom of this channel and hold, as long you know, we'd be making another higher low. Uh, then I would be inclined to 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 look towards the top side. We're just kind of sitting around here, uh, not really not really doing a lot. Uh, You've got you've got kind of a head and shoulders situation here with with the way this is etching out, uh, but it's it's looking more like a consolidation to me than a than a head and shoulders. But uh, you know with the with the footsie just kind of hanging out here, I think that as long as, as we don't see any you know any, we don't see any kind of real downturn uh, out of you know the uh, U.S. DAX, etc. Um, the you know, the risk is still to the upside, and we do have some topside trend lines. We've got some lines that go back. Right, we've got this one that goes back to uh, October 2015. We've got this one that rises up from August 2016, and so we've got some topside levels. We've got the upper parallel. So I think those would be areas to look for the FTSE to maybe potentially stall out on any kind of further push. And any push further, you know, this is even though these it's still record territory, you can still have resistance at record territory uh, if you've got some lines that are overarching. And people sometimes they raise their eyebrow and they're like, "Well, how can you have resistance at record highs?" And that's how. <laughs> and for you, uh, you, you fib users, uh, you, know, you could have an extension, a Fibonacci extension, right? That would be another uh, form of resistance that's that doesn't appear to be there, at least in terms of price. Uh, let's take a look at the S and P. So the S and P sitting at a big level. This is the cash uh, right now. I've got. You know, we've got the futures up a little bit, about four handles. Nasdaq's up about 11. Uh, so it'll be so far. It's looking like a, we still have three hours till the open, but it'll be a small up open. Uh, we've got good trend line confluence here between the November trend line and the Feb 2016 trend line, which passes through a lot of price action. But we've had some turns there. We even had some turns there recently. Uh, so we're sitting at a confluence of trend line support here. So today, today could be an important one, and then it needs to turn up. Uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't turn up, like today, doesn't hold this trend line, then the risk becomes this this low here, 23.54. I've got this over here as well, uh, 23.53. So they're they're only a point a point apart. But if we start to creep down below. Get into those low 1260s, then I think we're going to head down towards here, and the the risk then becomes that we're making a lower high, and that we might make be making a lower low here. And again, getting back to the DAX, if if the S&P starts to move down this far, it's it's pretty likely that the DAX is also dropping out of this this ascending wedge. And so, if the DAX is dropping out of the ascending wedge, and the S&P is creeping lower. Uh, if the tax makes a big move, then this may be signifying that we may be getting a big move to the downside in the S&P. But before I get ahead of myself, we are at support right here, okay? So I don't want to I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, and these are some old lines here. Now this was this was one. This is the two hour. Even though we get below that trend line. This is why I really say the low 1260s, and we and we get below 1260, and then we could we could basically we'll be making a lower high, and then we can make a a lower low, and and we could come down to this this channel line. Uh, I think I had this drawn on a different time frame, and now it's coming up a little wonky. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. So we could always we could always just put in a a triangle over here. 
So to me, the in, the U.S. indices are a little little tricky right now, which is again why I get back to the DAX, because the DAX makes that that big break. Then I think we're going to get a lot of clarity everywhere else, right? Obviously, the CAC and the EK will probably break down or break up out of that ascending wedge. And we'll have some clarity out of the S&P. And it could be the S&P that makes the hard break that forces the DAX to do it. I just keep going back to that DAX because, to me, it's it's the, the clearest picture right now. You know, looking at this, I mean, there's not a lot. You know, what are you, you going to do with this? Uh, maybe we get a triangle here forming out in the S&P. But, you know, you do have, you do have a nice little top side trend line that's, that's keeping things contained. We've got a bottom side trend line keeping things contained right now. So looking at the very short term, you know, we're kind of sitting in the middle of that. Uh, these are a couple of a couple of lines that I'm watching, uh, and and again, really, really, it comes down to comes down to that DAX chart. Uh, not that often do I focus on one market so much. Uh, it, well, you know what? The S and P, being that it's the largest stock market in the world, uh, the U.S. markets. You know they tend to to have them obviously then the most impact. If they have something significant, then I put a lot a lot of emphasis on where where global markets could head. So, but it's unusual that I put so much emphasis on the DAX. But again, again with that DAX chart, uh, we should be getting a break here soon. So maybe we have some exciting times ahead of us here uh, in terms of ideally I like to see a breakdown. Get a breakdown then. Then that would be nice because that means that markets are we got a risk off situation and volatility is going to uh, to tick up and we certainly have, have, are in need of that as as the VIX here this is the the CBOE volatility uh, index right this is the implied volatility index and we're going through a very extended period here right this is going all the way back to not long after the elections right after the U.S. elections. Right, so this is for the S&P 500, and here we are, months later, uh, a lot of compression, and we had a lot of compression back here in 2015, similar amount of time, four months, and then we had a spike. And so the longer that we go, the closer we are to getting to a spike. Spikes can be much harder to predict than the decline. As you can see, there's an asymmetrical... Uh, pattern to how volatility works. It can stay compressed for long periods of time, but usually spikes and drops, spikes and drops, spikes and drops. Uh, where, and again, that's that panic component, right? So complacency can stay in the market for a while. Uh, fear tends to, 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 to breed more fear and then and escalate into a situation where uh, we get those panic type situations and you see the VIX rise sharply because uh, everybody's running out buying uh, put protection and 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 in the options market because they're they're afraid of what's what's going on. Um, so volatility rises, all right. So I think that given that we're like four months into this, that 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 we're we're getting there uh, to a point where volatility should start to rise. But we could even continue to move higher in the S and P. And volatility start to rise, which would also be a warning sign that things are becoming more unstable, uh, which is not something that's something that's not uncommon when you get towards the top. But I think right now, you know, we have to be on our toes for a a a, uh, a potential spike in volatility. And uh, and so again, you know, maybe that maybe the DAX is going to be the uh, is going to be the little canary in the coal mine, right? That, that, that's warning us that we're about to get one of those, and again, perhaps it breaks to the upside, and 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 on we go, and and new record highs for the S and P, the FTSE, uh, the CAC, even, uh, and then we see you know the Nikkei finally get back to levels it hasn't seen in quite a while. So keep an eye on that DAX. <laughs> in case you didn't already uh, get that as being the theme of this uh, webinar. <laughs> All right, so again, looking at gold, silver, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, at least a, a bid, keeping it, keeping it in place, uh, just because we've got that, we've got that dollar weakness uh, right now. But I don't, I'm not that confident that it's going to move higher. Oil, a little bit of time, I think it could break down. 
uh, again and give some short opportunities uh, and the indices I think we're we're coming up on an interesting uh, point here so uh, that's it for today I uh, well, tomorrow we'll do the usual London FX and CFD trading and we'll talk some uh, we'll talk some currencies we'll look at this stuff again uh, but we'll we'll certainly be talking currencies uh, tomorrow. So you guys have a good one. I appreciate your uh, your time and your questions, and uh, I'll see you guys at the same time tomorrow.